scientists have detected a strange connection between gamma rays and lightning. Uh, David Neal of uh, Science Alert reports. Now, this is amazing because we just had a couple of comments from someone, uh, one of my viewers, saying that uh, they had a tremendous lightning storm with absolutely no rain. And it's been going on for, for hours and that there was just tremendous lightning with absolutely no rain. So uh, let's see what what has uh, what causes stuff like this. For the first time, scientists have clearly linked together two types of gamma ray phenomena in thunderclouds, suggesting that weak bursts of gamma ray activity might precede lightning flashes in certain conditions. Well, now we know that we're also entering the solar minimum, and uh, scientists say that we are entering a grand solar minimum and that uh, we have an increase of gamma rays bombarding the Earth, which is really bad because it's an um, increase of radioactive material coming into us. Uh, also, we have the weakening of our Earth's magnetosphere, our Earth's mag magnetic field. In the past five or six years, it's gone down almost 25%, which is really bad. Um, and it could be that this is going to be the sign of things to come, lightning without any rain because of the fact that it's also interacting with the gamma rays so uh, this is of course very dangerous obviously you can't have all these lightning strikes and uh, uh, we have to be very careful you know we have we'll be having blackouts we may be having surge surge of lightning um, causing the blackouts and uh, even the fact that uh, people should be aware that they should keep keep out of it obviously now, for the first time, scientists clearly linked these two types of gamma ray phenomenon in thunderclouds, suggesting that weak bursts of gamma ray activity might precede lightning flashes in certain condition. The two phenomena in question are weak emissions called gamma ray glows, which last about a minute, and much shorter and more intense terrestrial gamma ray flashes, TGFs for short, terrestrial gamma ray flashes. Both are known to happen inside thunderclouds, depending on the various positive and negative electrical charges around them brought on by accelerating electrons. But scientists have never fully understood how the two gamma ray phenomena work together or they're linked to lightning. Now they've been observed together with a lightning strike, opening up a whole new level of understanding when it comes to the crazy, supercharged physics that are happening inside a thunderstorm. Quote, During a winter thunderstorm in Kanazawa, our monitors detected a simultaneous TGF and lightning strike, end quote, said astrophysicist Yuuki Wada from the University of Tokyo in Japan. He said, This is fairly common, but interestingly, we also saw a gamma ray glow in the same area at the same time, end quote. And he went on to explain, furthermore, the glow abruptly disappeared when the lightning struck. We can say conclusively, the events are intimately connected, and this is the first time this connection has been observed, end quote. While scientists have known for decades that gamma ray activity could accompany thunderstorms brought on by passing electrons interacting with nuclei of nitrogen item atoms, these two types of events have only been detected together once before and with less conclusive readings. This time around, there's no doubt, the researchers say, describing it as the first unequivocal simultaneous detection, quote-unquote, of the two events at sea level. However, there's still a lot more to learn about exactly what is going on. The new findings are part of ongoing research by a collaboration called the Gamma Ray Observation of Winter thunderground, Thunderclouds Growth for Short, the team works with a series of monitors installed on schools and other buildings in Kanazawa in Ishikawa Prefecture in Japan. With thunderclouds naturally brought low to the ground by the surrounding topography, it's a perfect place to study what is going on inside them. The portable monitors comprise, compromise both the uh, scintillation crystal to detect ionizing radiation and two photomultiplier tubes that can turn photons into an electric and readable signal. Interestingly, 
The researchers say there's a possibility that gamma ray glows don't just precede lightning strikes, but actually help cause them. Another one of the many mysteries that remain to be solved is why TGF and might also be able to answer, um, also help the meteorologists predict lightning strikes with greater accuracy. Quote, with more sensors, we could greatly improve predictive models, says WADA. It's hard to say right now, but with sufficient sensor data, we may be able to predict lightning strikes within about 10 minutes of them happening. And within around 2 kilometers, that's 1.24 miles of where they can happen. The research has been published in Communication Physics, and it's on Science Alert. Can you imagine being able to predict lightning 10 minutes before it strikes? That's amazing. Now concerning the lightning strikes without any rain, uh, you know, that means that it's dry. That's not even logical. So uh, dry, they're called dry thunderstorms, and they refer to thunder and lightning that occur without bringing rain to the ground. In fact, the thunder-bearing clouds do produce rain, they say, but the rain droplets have already evaporated in the air before being able to reach the ground. So it does rain, but it's just that they've evaporated already, uh, perhaps uh, they ha because of the summer, because of the dryness, uh, because of the conditions that... Uh, make them evaporate before touching the ground. So yeah, it does rain, maybe some other, in some other area, and not over the area where the observer is standing, perhaps. Uh, the lightning does strike, and there is not rain over the, the observer, of course. So what is a dry thunderstorm? This is what it, what it's called, the lightning without the rain. A dry thunderstorm. Thunderstorms usually accompanied by rain, but not all thunderstorms are wet and a seemingly weird weather phenomenon called the dry thunderstorm. They refer to thunder and lightning that occur without bringing rain to the ground, and in fact the thunder-bearing clouds do produce rain, but rain droplets have already evaporated in the air before reaching the ground, and this is possible if the clouds are sufficiently high and the humidity of the air and the clouds in the ground is low enough. One example is lightning originating from the spreading top of a, a cumulonimbus cloud, which is often called the anvil cloud, and is distant from the main body of the thunderstorm where rain pours heavily. The anvil cloud is so high that rain coming from it evaporates before reaching the ground. However, lightning from the anvil cloud is capable of traveling through the dry air and reaching the ground. Dry thunderstorm is very dangerous to people on the ground, as one may not be aware of the sudden occurrence of lightning in a rain-free area. It's also the culprit of many wild fires. Without any rain to wet the grasses and trees, dry thunderstorms can trigger a fire more easily with the flame, and the flames can spread, of course, more quickly. So, of course, that's why it's dangerous. A person on the ground experiences lightning but no rain because the rain droplets have evaporated before reaching the ground. Objects in the diagram are, of course, not to scale. So, yeah, it is dangerous because of the fact that you may not be aware that there will be lightning striking because there's no rain for you to uh, protect yourselves from, you know, go indoors or something. And the fact that it may strike uh, with you not being aware and, of course, causing... Uh, uh, problems to buildings and especially uh, starting wildfires because of this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube 
channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.